And so I started with motivation for this talk. So um, this guy is an academic fellow. So he is an assistant professor of databases in uh, CA. I follow him on Twitter. And this is what he tweeted on now. So I built this in 2008. So um, he does a survey um, in his class um, and for databases courses. So his last lecture is reserved for uh, databases to be discussed, which people go to. So um, he had posted many years survey, but this year survey top two choices were uh, either Cockroach to me or Google Spanish. So I thought uh, I should learn as well. So what these two systems are. So uh, uh, we are discussing about distributed uh, data systems. So uh, I'm not moving the first slide. So these systems are also called new SQL systems, we can also call them like elastic databases. So they have the same thing. So this is my Twitter handle. <coughs> Yeah, so and these two systems are somehow related. So Google Spanner was something Google has been using in their AdWords from 2008. And uh, AdWords is like catch all for Google. So this will be really, really resilient and uh, uh, scalable system. And uh, then they published a paper in, uh, of Google Spanner in 2012. Uh, and uh, people from Google Created this panel, uh, but for using this panel, created a company called Cockroach Labs, and uh, from that paper, basically Cockroach Labs is an unofficial implementation of Google's panel. Paper. So we'll go through <coughs> what these distributed databases are and uh, why they are needed and uh, how they solve the problems of data distribution, data application, and transactions. So just a little bit of history. So we started with SQL databases, relational model, uh, asset transactions. The only limitation was the scalability and availability. Uh, so in 2000s, we started reading that block that uh, if I have to scale, uh, how to scale uh, SQL database, so we started charting and then charts were very difficult to manage. So people wrote some middle there where the logic of dividing data into charts was put in some middle there, but they were kind of manually managing it. So, uh, 2000 saw the rise of these NoSQL databases. Primarily, for all of us, the data was distributed across multiple ways, so scalability. But points in things with first the relational model was missing consistency in transactions uh, had to be followed. So, if you look at the systems we know till in 2010, I have some other limitations. So, uh, say SQL suffers from scale, or it is no SQL data. This is have some other uh, limitation in terms of consistency uh, or, or transaction support. So, we can get into details of each of these terms. So, so uh, please feel free to ask questions if you have any questions. Is the like this shared? Uh, I'll share this. Can you say that for no SQL Yeah, I'll come to that. So eventual consistency, so consistency, so the, the many types of consistency, eventual consistency is one. But what we are looking for is something called is a, uh, so gap theorem says, so seeing gap theorem is actually a strong consistency or linear stability or external consistency. So we come to that. So there are some nuances so, um, of those things as well. So I'll come to that in detail. So there are things to catch there. So, so the idea is very simple. Can I have the best of both worlds? So I know that NoSQL databases scale really well, and then SQL system has a relation more than transaction So I'll actually come to what transaction is. So that's also very important. Uh, uh, so we'll come to that, but just like uh, keep in mind that there are two levels the problem of can be monitored. So let's look at how data is distributed. So, SQL databases are not built to distribute data. They are primarily built for a single machine. Most SQL data are built in mind keeping that we have to distribute data across the So they primarily have two uh, approaches. One is hashing and another is what is the way. So hashing is something used in um, say dynamic tools like Asana. So where um, you have your kind of hashing on a key and then based on your key much like hash factor, 
deciding where we do wish but more to do here. So the project that it, it's very simple logic to so know why the calculation that we have a particular thing inside. The only point is that the reach query is not the so you can't do reach. So, uh, so if you're some sort of if you have to do reach, you have to use standard type returns because you don't know where a particular range is set because it's more randomized by the hash So order presenting is other thing. So we table and, and uh, HPs uh, uses this. So which is in some ways saying that I maintain a range index on top of uh, uh, where my data is set and that is sorted in some order. And if I have to do a range query, I pretty much know to which nodes uh, these guys fall into and then I have to scan them. So these are say uh, nodes and then these are uh, keys inside so, so in some way. The only one is that I'm managing an uh, index on top of the machine. So that was for cash, which directly was the machine for the machine partition. So I need to do much more here. And if I have to partition, then uh, uh, I can partition as well. So I have to partition a range index and I have to partition the index. So and then they do replication as well. So, uh, a particular thing is actually located on multiple nodes. So same range would be actually in a multiple nodes. So if you have three nodes and you have a set replication factor of three, your data pretty much is size seven. And then if you add one more node, more, so uh, just because your replication factor is three, you will try to be like a kind of dragon scale on So this is how simple no simple database will line balance and Something similar is being done, so which we see in these super data. Because that's what these are two concepts. So how to distribute data across multiple nodes of different databases. So taking proof from the most possible order preserving mechanism. So as you can see, since we have multiple copies of data, so the problem comes from in terms of how to replicate data and make that data because we have distributed systems. So SQL also has a uh, say uh, primary secondary master scale kind of configuration, so which also has to do with this kind of problem of replication. The only point to note here is that since this is our base, so we should know what minimum variety we have. So uh, replication can be either synchronous or asynchronous. So if you are going with asynchronous, so there is likelihood of using certain types in case of say uh, primary data before we get uh, replication happens because acknowledgement. In synchronous uh, uh, replication, there is always a delay in case of that. So these are two choices to make even in SQL systems. So uh, looking at NoSQL database with the kind of point you were raising, so NoSQL are primarily built for eventual consistency. So and the way they try to solve consistency in most of the cases are by one of these means. So they will either say the last right wins. So in Cassandra if you are writing, so whatever is the last right you say that is correct. Uh, and or other ways we will use something like Quorum. If I say file machine, I will use a quorum of three of this to say that what is the correct for the other particular point. Uh, this uh, CIT is our uh, advanced concept steps, which are like to use and maintain multiple data types uh, of manage this. So just like So eventual consistency is say suppose uh, so this is a distributed system. So if I say I have uh, so I take example of Cassandra, I don't use that much. So if I say five nodes, so you only write one node. And then that uh, so even as a SQL case, considering it to be say master scale, you only write one node. And eventually it has to propagate to other nodes because because of duplication factor, since the data is also stored in multiple copies, you have to update all the nodes having that copy. So uh, I'll go back to that example. So, uh, so, so this is the one most of the uh, semi-stupid data is this model. So even if I have to, so this range one, uh, range one and range one are copies. Just that data is replicated on three different nodes. So that if one of my node fails, I won't lose any data. So that's the one of the benefits that the distributed databases or distributed system are supposed to be. So since you have two ranges now, so you have to keep them in sync. So I can be either writing to this or to this, but at any point in time, so both of them should uh, say show the same data. 
this can be said as a second several list of people in this room. So I have divided into three pages. Say uh, from 1 to 100, if people come uh, and then say 100 to 200. Some people are absent, so obviously they are not. As they are entering the room, I am adding those values here. So I can be adding uh, in any of the three machines if any of the person from say 0 or uh, till 100 is coming. So just to keep that consistent in all the three machines, I have to say match as well. So if I have added say 50 person here, I should tell mode 1 and 50. Also internally, then 50 has arrived. And if I am writing something to mode 1, I should also tell say mode 2 and mode 3 that this person has already. So write may happen to a single mode, but it should get propagated to the other modes carrying the same piece of duplicated data. So this is only for say, so this is giving you all problems, but there is another problem to solve that you have to keep them in sync, which is also a difficult problem. So that's what we are discussing. So if there are multiple copies of the same data across multiple nodes, so how to keep that in sync? So, so, the, so that's what we are discussing. In, uh, as well as that, there is a synchronous and uh, uh, synchronous kind of implementation. Uh, so, uh, so SQL would want uh, essentially that you keep it say, synchronous. If you actually want, say that do not use data uh, as well. So and so something like say uh, Cassandra do not work here. So, so Cassandra so that's how you decide which data is to pick as well. So if you are okay with creating uh, say logs based system where uh, say the last guy is in all the time. So you can pick uh, Cassandra. But there are cases uh, if say you so if you are uh, C dollar A, so you cannot do last write. So then obviously what? So if you do, people are badly checking it. So if you do last write, then so obviously one transaction is lost. So so, uh, so the data we should pick also depends much on uh, what is the use case. So if so the kind of consistency uh, or isolation uh, uh, you would want would also decide which data is to support. So generally, so the whole most of people would have to solve this problem is, so if uh, say the consistency is not given by the underlying data, so they will write application logic to uh, get the consistency. But what is the kind of overhead of using say more simple data basic in cases you need uh, say, uh, strong consistency? So consistency, so, uh, so, con so strong consistency, uh, external consistency or irreversibility are one and the same thing in literature. So we'll come to that what exactly it is. So just that uh, so these are parallel systems, so they don't uh, assume. So in Cassandra, so if you are adding to one node, uh, so if you are written actually into one node, so there is no guarantee that you will get uh, the value uh, as soon as you have written. So I have written, so I would have got the acknowledgement saying that uh, I have written data correctly. And, uh, uh, but there can be another user at the same time, even after the acknowledgement, you will be getting the value. So it's just because this implication takes me. So this is uh, one of the ways of saying uh, so how do you enforce consistency? So these are multiple ways. So you can say that last right is very and legal reflection is something like so you choose a reason and whatever legal say you say is right. So how to decide which is the right way in the case of conflict. So so because it's a distributed system, multiple people can be saying. Similarly, so either you can use legal reflection but legal can be wrong. So people so quorum is much stronger constraints. So quorum says that if I have five people, I ask all of them, and the majority says um, I would uh, follow that. So if I say five votes, I ask all five of them, whatever the majority of them will say. So in case if one vote is say silently now and uh, rights are not possible to that order because of a network partition, even if it's essentially uh, giving me wrong value, so I will be consistent in my state saying giving the right value. So but so if you leave it to the line on a single code, we are going to be lying on the same way. So since you spoke about consistency level and location pattern, so not many times we tend to use uh, consistency level equals to location pattern. So let's so say you are making three repetition on location pattern to three, and when you say uh, uh, consistency level also set to three, that means okay. Uh, is it a good choice to do that way? That, that gives you a strong consistency, right? So, yeah, so consistency uh, is a very, very good choice. So, uh, so, 
Consistency is captured, but also different from consistency in the acid transactions. So uh, we can come to that. But if you want, maybe at the end of it, because there are some things which are discussing this. So if it is not clear at the end, so I'll take it up. So I have a question. So compared to leader election and your quorum reach, obviously your quorum reach is uh, much uh, better. Yeah. Is there any trade-off in terms of the Yeah, so, so, so obviously there is a trade-off. So this is faster. So there are multiple, uh, say, levels. So quorum can be, uh, say, data center specific. Local quorum and global quorum. So you can say that in my data center, find me a quorum. Or you can say global quorum. So on all the servers, I have find me a quorum. So lo obviously local quorum or data center specific quorum is faster. So leader is even more faster than you are going to one more first. And uh, if, you, if that one is out, then there is a so, so obviously, so, so, so there is some order that may also, if you are going for consistency, so there will be, in, so consistency is a fidelity because say opposite of availability, so obviously in quorum, if you are going for quorum, if you have three nodes, uh, and say if you put uh, five nodes, and uh, say quorum cannot be reached because majority of your nodes are down, you cannot even answer the query. So, so it kind of impacts your availability as well. So it's not just that you get delayed, you are kind of compromising on availability as well. So if there are three nodes, two nodes are down, you cannot even answer the query because Gorev is not reached. Two of your nodes are not even responding. You need at least two nodes to respond to the answer. So, so you cannot, so availability is important. Availability will predict with the leader that you need Yes, you, yeah, but the chances of that are say, uh, yeah, so obviously, so as, as you go down the path of get, achieving more consistency, so, uh, so you have to lose on yeah, so CRTTs are uh, basically data structures, so where you don't modify uh, them, so it's more like immutable, and they uh, uh, say uh, store, stain, the kind of version, uh, it, so uh, you will see a part of it in the current state. So, so uh, I'll discuss MVCC, so it's something like you get some sense of how. So, so this is how say NoSQL guys were doing it so far. So what has changed in history so that we can kind of merge it now? So there are uh, distributed consensus protocols. And uh, so Paxos was something that's 30 years old. And uh, uh, interestingly, say Google implemented it for the Google Spanner. And after implementing it, uh, so they wrote a paper that how difficult it is it is to implement a Paxos so this is that hard so don't ask me questions on that so, so the reason probably we didn't see these distributed databases so far that this is very very difficult to solve so consensus in itself is very difficult problem to solve distributed consensus is even more difficult problem to solve so Paxos was the algorithm till recently we had and implementing it was to go for now so then very limited implementation and Google are operating. So Google implemented and probably about it, how difficult it is. So then came draft. So this is a paper was published by actually uh, MIT PhD student in 2014, which is relatively easier to implement and understand to some extent. And then now everyone is uses to blindly use draft in some form for their distributed consensus. So, this is probably one of the events which has kind of led to the US system development because this is very, very important to so come to the So, what the graph say in general sense says is that uh, there is a leader and there are followers, right to leader, and, and these followers are distributed, uh, and then these are keys on, on, on these nodes. Unless you get acknowledgement from majority of the nodes, then only consider it to be committed, otherwise don't consider it to be committed. So, uh, in a case where, say, uh, majority nodes don't have a value, so you can tell that I don't have value. So, even if some power has value, so just because, say, majority of the nodes have value. So, this is the binary intuition, it is much more complicated than that. Just that it is a way to get consensus across multiple nodes. Which are distributed for each other. 
where say one node says something, another node says something. But if you show the user one value, then stick to it. So suppose, uh, so your friend has a, a posted a comment on Facebook. You see that uh, comment on your Facebook wall just because you hit a server where uh, say that comment was posted. So if you refresh your screen, it should not be a case that you are served a value from another server to which this value is not posted and you don't see that. So you stay consistent with the view. So it's more like mapping your request to a single server. So this is more like a, so so these are the configuration most of the UPC port. Just that they have one maximum level and you cannot tune that I also want this feature. So that so so something like a sample where, where you go uh, to a particular node and then you would answer. You can say that if a request comes to me and it goes to a particular node, so all the other requests in that transaction, if they are coming, should also go to that node. So, so, so anything in transaction should always go to same node. So this is more like a confirmation. So 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 in Cassandra, so say maximum if I say maximum isolation is this, so you also get say everything below it. Just that they have to be minimal. So so SQL databases will uh, support this, but they also support all the more things. So you can choose and configure so what they do. So just one thing is different. So how do you achieve serialism? In fact, if you have studied, so two-phase uh, locking is the default mechanism by which you uh, uh, achieve serialism. <coughs> just that there is a deadlock detection. So this is one of the uh, other two things. So multi version concurrency platform. So how do you obtain, say, snapshot isolation? So say intuitively. So every time you write, you create new data structure. You write a timestamp, and then if you are reading a value, you just get the last value that was written before you start the data, so that you are not affected by any zero. Uh, so, is that a vector for the Yeah, so, so, so this timestamp should also be say, unique across all the nodes, and synchronizing block is also a very difficult problem. So, Google Spanner does it by having an atomic clock at each node so that you know the absolute correct time. Uh, so, and CockroachDB does it a little differently. So, they have a software and hardware. So, Google has a hardware solution for clock for time. Just because you want the absolute time. And, uh, and then CockroachDB does it a little differently with the software. So, they don't have hardware. So time would be absolute time. So you need to know exactly correct time. Because so since you are comparing two values, so if your time is wrong, then everything is wrong. So time needs to be very different. But this seems like one thing that is which you can do Plus databases is supposed to be Yeah. So so databases or so MVCC is how your snapshot isolation. Is implemented. So even Cassandra and all these databases have to be this. So if you are writing to databases, how so this is how you implement that if you are writing into parallel transactions and reading into parallel transactions. So you will see the values. If you are reading, you will see the values before which before the time you started your transaction. So you will never see if anyone is writing in the time. Duration when you started the transaction, those values will not be visible by this. So this is an algorithm to implement, say, a snapshot isolation. So two-phase blocking is the default implementation if you have to implement serializing. So in, in traditional RDBMS, what you say is you can stay at home overnight. Versus in this one, you are saying you can make the system record. No, no, no. So I am targeting the SQL system. So these are the so all the SQL systems provide these layers. So it is tunable. So by definition, a SQL system should give you serializable isolation data. So if it is not giving you serializable, so then it is not I of S. So I of S is decided in uh, so S of I means essentially serializable isolation. 
So if somebody is not giving you serialize and your isolation level, so then you say that it is not higher than that. So if say Cassandra claims to be, uh, say I provide an isolation, but they only give you snapshot isolation. So it is more like so. So you will not say that it is higher than that. In some way. So and then. So if you have to implement serializability, you will go by two phase, it's something called two phase locking. And if you have to go to snapshot isolation, you will go by something called MPCC. So and how say these usable systems are building it? Serializable system across multiple nodes is they are kind of mixing both of them. So they are using MPCC. So this is multi-further concurrency control. You will have multi versions. So every time you write, you will create a new version with a timestamp. And then you will know what is written before, what is written after my transaction started. And then time needs to be really correct. So that is another very difficult problem actually to solve how to synchronize blocks across my data. So every database has to provide serial. So just that
So I'm not sure what uh, you like, but say Amazon Aura is there. So against Amazon Aura, they are performing really well. So at least one way across the So, yeah, so the summary is something like this. Like, basically, NoSQL is NoSQL databases are a result of so all the existing algorithms plus this distributed consensus. So whatever says false one things we know, they're not doing anything. They're human as such, but they have knowledge to our concepts. So, if there are any other questions. So what is the, uh, how do you characterize new signal and the signal? Yeah, so it's not a say apple to apple uh, comparison because what new signal systems are doing is say SQL and SQLizability. So suppose if you have to build so use case for the new SQL is where we would essentially want to use a new SQL system is uh, say where you want say asset properties. So something like you are looking building uh, looking uh, say cab healing uh, application and then you have multiple geographies. So you have multiple data centers as well. So if you want asset properties across multiple data centers. So there is no other way to do it. So I think you have to do it in application. Right? A database gives it to you. So basically, uh, SQL is more like best of both worlds. So I have an extra slide. So essentially, architecture looks like this. I have actually abstracted out so many things. So internally, Popular DB uses a key value store, a raw CD. And then they have a SQL layer on top of it, which kind of gives you all the illusion that you have possible. So, so, yeah. So, this is more like, uh, you know, say for example, NoSQL has its own drawbacks. Yeah. So, NoSQL has its own drawback, like the mention consistency as such. It can tune into a strong consistency, but SQL. Uh, maybe it's have to solve problems. Say for example, if I want to do something like a banking application, uh, you know, something simple like, say for example, Paytm, if I want to have a wallet, right? so I should have transactions there to keep the number of consistence, right? the balance or whatever. So uh, how do you take on these kind of problems? Is it okay to go for this equal to No SQL can go. So I'm not sure what you mean by, um, say, the no SQL can give you strong consistency. Because as far as I know, most of the systems cannot give you say strong consistency. Or either you have to sync everything in them. So what I was telling was in the no sync world well, strong consistency, say it's because of the replication factor, right? You are kind of syncing uh, the data in one node to the other node asynchronous. <coughs> That's why you don't get these strong consistency. If, if, I, if the client is strong. I'll briefly take uh, um, so, yeah. I so, so cap theory of people, right? So so uh, consistency comes from cap theory. So what C in Capture is basically L. So it is linearizability. So what uh, linearizability, strong consistency or external consistency mean? Mean is that at any point in time, outside the person should not even know that you have multiple nodes. So if by any chance you can tell that you have multiple nodes, then it is not a strong consistency system. So, so these are the three terms and this is exactly what C in Capture means. Just to be, to be to say for your problem, uh, it's not a problem because only one person will do the transaction on your wallet. If there are not multiple transactions happening on your wallet from multiple people. Uh, could be that. Even if, it could be. So, all these systems have to be serializable. But it is more like uh, serializability, not consistency. So, what consistency says is that at any point in time, you should not be able to tell that you have multiple systems. So what that means is that you should not show two different values at any point in time, at least to outside users. So you may have say different values, but outside the user should never see two different values coming out from your system at any point, even if uh, he is in two different transactions. So that is consistency or strong consistency. <coughs> so coming to my actual problem, say if I want to implement my backing. So no SQL systems will never be even good for banking. So no bank uses no SQL systems. Right? If we talk to any of them. So for their money logic, they will never use because you need strong consistency. So if money is getting deducted from one account, 
we had to go to Y or uh, say Google's panel was built. So they had problem that they had AdWords. You can show ads in India and in US simultaneously, but you have single account. And money is deducting from your account. So even if you are showing two ads parallelly and somebody is clicking on them, they should know as soon as say your account is zero. So there will be no money left in your account. And even if these two transactions are happening in distributedly two different data centers, they should be consistent in the web. So you should get a uh, strong isolation. And, uh, so as soon as your account is given, they should know. So, so they should not lose money on that. So not that they have shown one ad in the US and uh, they are also showing one ad in India parallelly uh, uh, and uh, losing money. Just because US transaction is taking time to reach India or Indian transaction is taking time to reach. So that level of consistency. So if, even if you are thinking about banking application, so it should have say, that level of say, consistency. So outside person should then not even be able to exploit this vulnerability that you have multiple systems and different values are there in those systems. So to an outside person, it should always be that there is only single system. So you, you should not even feel that there is a uh, How does they take on the, um, making it more scalable for a dollar? Yes, sir. That was the entire presentation actually. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so these are the reasons by, by which you can make it fault tolerant, consistent, uh, and so support all the asset properties. I'll share these slides. So, so, uh, I agree so, all, the, uh, all the large issues mentioned, but what I worry is that there has the latency, right? Yeah. Between data centers. That's what the problem I'm trying to understand. So how do we lessen the latency? Say as you mentioned. Span, right? You have two data centers or, or servers in one in the US and one in, one in Asia. Yeah. So maybe my app, when the ads are shown, it is talking to the nearest. Uh, yeah, so if you look at, say, the consensus protocol as well. So we discussed Raft. So Raft also works on the base of Quora. So, so uh, you cannot say skip. So says, we discussed about Raft. So we work on Quora. So, so if you want a certain set of features, Obviously, there is some latency, but this is the best solution we have. So, I, I just so if you want the latency and have a strong consistency with discrete systems. So, impossible. This is going to be CAB all at once. You weren't so late. Wait for 15 more years, maybe. For your your question, this is related to Paytm. What does they do uh, they, they for internet transactions like a wallet management or? They save all your uh, data into my So when you uh, are booking your flights and everything to the external uh, transactions and all, like before night banking and all, they obviously rely on banks. But whatever log is present in, is present in, uh, in your uh, MySQL database. Yeah. So we like to manage MySQL because it's a highly uh, scalable asset because I used to work in the shell. So I, we had 30 million customers. So we definitely had a uh, MySQL is a primary database and uh, so for internal modules let's say you have uh, um, millions of rows and you just want to insert on something like this is a very practical way I'm speaking uh, so it, you can use MongoDB uh, NoSQL database and if NoSQL database will work for internal modules but for the external which you uh, see on the paytm.com uh, do wallet transactions or make any payment to it, whatever logs uh, they store is there to MySQL database. So this slide is basically copied from uh, a person's uh, market here. So, so I'll share this in, uh, as well. So he kind of explains all these concepts in a very simple way and as well as So he has kind of converted all these research topics into something much more interesting. So this is actually a slide that's copied. So I'll share this with you. And then he has a corresponding talk where he only talks about these things. So if you once if you understand how what how is serialized it will be different from snapshot, I still want to understand all the use cases which people use can and what are the limitations if you are using say something else, what you cannot do with Cassandra, or what use cases you will have to drive your own application logic if you are using Cassandra, which say my SQL or Oracle is in 2019, what's the best database for uh, images and videos? This is what you can actually use hybrid image. 
So, Spanner is internal implementation to Google. We published a paper which these guys copied. We did the whole system. Yeah, just that so these two people never talked. Just that they have read a paper and then. So, which one? So, Cockroach can be uh, first line, new SQL database, supports everything that is there in uh, SQL. So, so, implementation wise, it is very different, but logically, it will be able to relational model. So, user only needs to relational model. Internal is using a proxy. So, Apache always computer, but this is their first line. So join, so I can support hybrid. So whatever the hybrid can do, it has to be. Okay, so thank you. Uh, thank you. So